Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Well, hi, and welcome to my office. Now, I'm not at my desk this morning. I brought you to another part of the reserve to talk about today's subject, and that is how I go about photographing and filming a very difficult little marsupial called the Agile Antichinus. And it's taken over my life a lot these days because I want to know more about it, I want to study it, I want to photograph as much as I can and film as much as I can. There's a lot of difficulties that come along in that, like today, it's been raining all night, all morning, it's wet, it's humid and it's sticky and horrible. Now I have to come up with all sorts of different techniques, DIY stuff, to help me out so I get as best footage as I can. And one right at the minute is, I have sunlight on the wrong side of me, so I'm actually filming on the wrong side as you can see, I'm not lit up very well. Now I'm going to have a problem with the sun coming across me here. It's hitting here, on my lens hood, and creating a bit of a flashback. So. You've got to be a bit inventive when you're out in the scrub. So I use my cap a lot to do that. Just use the peak to come across, just block out so that it doesn't reflect back onto the lens. And I have another little DIY thing here too. Let's put that back up there. Now the reason why we're filming here in bad light is I wanted to get this tree in just behind me. My finger up there. There's a hollow there, and I've seen the Agile Antichinus, a female, going up there once. I haven't been able to see whether it's gone up there anymore, so I really want to find out whether the group of Agile females are gathered and nesting in there on the off season. So where breeding season's finished and they've all dispersed, I can't find them. So I'm hoping that they're up there. If they are, I can build a platform and hang around and film. So enough waffling, let's get on with it. I've got snake cam and it's going on the end of a painter's pole, an extension pole, where I can uh, get right up there. Just had a check and it does reach, so that'll be good. I've got to tape it on, get it set up so that I can look inside and see whether I'm just wasting my time or not hanging around here. All right, let's get on with it. Foiled again, that Agile was not looking for a nesting site for itself, it was looking for somebody else's nest so that it could eat either the egg, when the eggs are small enough, like a little fantail, they can just gobble them up. Mainly they're looking for the actual chicks, the hatchlings. There's two birds that are up there now looking at me, the rainbow lorikeets, that's their nesting site. So it was only after a feed. So foiled again. I'm going to have to keep searching for where these females are all nesting together in the off season. I need that to be able to film them. Big part of my documentary that I'm trying to build, and it's a, a missing part. I'm running out of time. I've, we're in March now. August is their breeding season. So if I don't find them soon, I'm just going to miss out on that little bit of footage that would add a lot to the documentary. Now one of the problems I come up against every now and then is filming something that's above me. So we're looking up into a very bright sky. So our exposure is going to be all over the place. And to counteract that, what I've done is, oh, now it's raining. So I'll better talk quickly. I put a pole up so I can mount the camera on the top. XF300. 
sits up there nicely, screw it in with the tripod head. Um, I'll put some stays in, peg them in, so it doesn't move too much when I'm mucking around with buttons. So my subject's over there in a the tree, little agile antichinus with females this year. I had three trees that I could actually film the babies coming out of the nest, running up and down the tree, going about being joeys, learning about life. So that's a good little tool, little DIY project I come up with to solve a problem. I have a ladder that's uh, two metres high. I stand on top of that, pole's three metres high. See, so yeah, not all that comfortable standing on top of a ladder. Made a little platform on it so that me calves don't get too sore. Fairly safe. I always make sure that the legs of the ladder are really fixed in properly and level. So yeah, just another way around things to get good exposure, even when I'm photographing too, it's good. A nice level with our lighting at the back and everything, and we can zoom in, do whatever we want. Now I've been very lucky in this particular spot. I've been able to photograph and film four female Hadrile Antichinus, going about their business, bringing up their young and all sorts of things. It's been amazing. But what was even more lucky for me was from January to February, I've got a beautiful shaft of light, full sunlight coming through the little valley there in between the trees, lighting up my scene here with full sunlight. So at the end of each day from six till seven, I had full sunlight. So an hour to work in, that's all I had. Now my subject is very fast and very erratic, like I've already said. So extremely difficult to, do, to get a great action shot of them. Normally, got the flash on, it's a dark environment, one shot, get the glamour shot. And they'll give you plenty of those, and I've got some fantastic images of them. But what I've really been wanting for some time is great action shots, them leaping in the air. Because they don't run like a normal animal. They bound like a possum, so they jump in the air a lot, and that's what I'm after. I want to get them as they're leaping into the air, get a beautiful action shot. So how have I gone with the 7D Mark II with this beautiful bit of sunlight I'm getting for an hour? Because we can go up to 2000 ISO in this camera, that's allowed me for the first time ever with any digital camera to go up to 8 thousandths of a second. So we get full use of the camera's shutter speed for the first time. There's a lot of difficulties that still come with even having been able to have those high shutter speeds and everything. My subject is only coming out from a metre. So I've got a metre with it jumping in the air, so it's probably about two to three bounds before it gets to the food and then it shoots off again. Extremely hard to time anything within a metre. Oh, and we've got my little friend turned up to say hello. Usually comes and grabs a little bit of feed too. Uh, whenever it sees me around the reserve, doesn't matter where I go, it'll come up to me. And that's a little fairy ring. So lots of difficulties with trying to get that image, trying to time it properly. And out of 500 clicks, I get three great images. That's all. Now we're into March. Sun's gone. So I have to wait till next year to get more. So extremely difficult, hot conditions, very, you know, 30 degrees and all that on your back, it's hard, difficult, but like I always say, if you don't do, you don't get. Now with the Agile themselves, they hate the sound of the shutter. So 10 frames per second, brrr, doesn't scare them, it just annoys them. It's like us running our fingers down a blackboard, it's a horrible sound. Well, they think the shutter speed's the same thing. So I'll get one chance. That's normally all I get. Now, what DIY things have I used here to keep myself comfortable? Well, I've got this tree that's fallen down. And it gave me the idea that I have a seat here. Sit nice and comfortably. 
found an old log over there that had been cut up. Put this nice little V branch across, so it's got a nice V on it. And I can put this little flat piece of wood that I found, pulled it off the log here on the ground. Beautiful, sit me bum on there, that's quite comfortable. There's a little DIY thing, you just got to use your imagination. Now there's something else that I'd like to share with you, and that is when a tree crashes to the ground. It creates a lot of interest. Breaks a lot of trees on the way down, they release their perfumes, draws the birds in, and other animals as well. And with the branches digging into the soil, disturbing it, lots of smells coming up. The animals that live in the undergrowth will come out to investigate, see where they can get a feed. But with this particular one that's fallen down here, this is a wattle tree, I know that the perfume off this wattle tree will create a lot of interest for the agile antichinus. This is where I used to film the males. I had eight here, learnt a lot off them. But when breeding season finishes, all males die. So I haven't had much go on here for quite some time. Just the odd stray female. But I know that they're here. I just haven't been able to film them. But because this has fallen down, I know that they're going to turn up because they can't resist the smell of that broken bit of wattle, the perfume will be irresistible to them and that's exactly what's happened. I've been able to film three females coming and going here and I've been getting some great stuff and learning a lot along the way. Now your environment mightn't be the same as mine. You might have more open woodlands, not so much undergrass, so there's not as many animals that live in that sort of environment like I have here. But it'll still create a lot of interest. Take Bird's land, for instance, up in Mildura. Hi to Pamela and uh, Bird A Club up there. Hope you're enjoying this little ditty. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. Now your environment is different to mine. A lot more open, but a tree falling to the ground will still create some sort of interest. You'll get wombats come over, have a look what's going on because the ground's been disturbed. The odd bird here and there, especially the ones that hop around the ground, like your little fairy wrens and things like that. They'll all come and have a look around the root ball, see what's going on. Get lots of geckos up there as well. I've taken a few photographs of them. They'll probably come out and have a look at what's going on. So it's always worthwhile hanging around, seeing what'll turn up on a tree that's freshly fallen to the ground. So that's enough of me waffling on. Hopefully you got something out of this little ditty. Now if you'd like to subscribe, just click on the subscription button down below. You'll get notification whenever I do anything else. Now if you'd like to have a look at everything I've been doing over the years, click on the icon just down there, little cow holding a sign. That'll take you to my channel. You can go and have a look at review, camera reviews, me practicing wildlife documentaries, blah, blah. So just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. See ya. Sorry, but the bird's entertaining me. <laughs>